Welcome to the second section of this advanced predictive analytics course. In this section, we will talk about two very important techniques, k-fold cross-validation and parameter tuning. So let's see what we are going to do in this section. First, we will talk about k-fold cross-validation, which is a technique for getting a more accurate assessment of model performance. After that, we will be comparing models with k-fold cross-validation because this is a better way to compare models. And finally, in the third video, we will be using k-fold cross-validation for doing hyperparameter tuning. And this is about choosing the best hyperparameters for our models. Now, these, uh, these techniques, k-fold cross-validation and hyperparameter tuning, are really crucial and really important for building great predictive analytics models. So this is a very important section. We will talk about k-fold cross-validation. Okay, this is the plan for this video. First, we will talk about the holdout cross-validation method. We know about this method, but we will do a little review about that. After that, we will talk about k-fold cross-validation, and we will finish by performing a k-fold cross-validation example in Scikit-Learn. Okay, so uh, remember that the goal of predictive analytics is to provide predictions about unknown events. We want to produce models that generalize well to unseen data. Now, how do we do this? Now, to estimate how our model will perform with data that uh, the model hasn't seen before, we use a technique called cross-validation, and there are many flavors or many methods of cross-validation. So far, we have been doing uh, the holdout method, but in this video, we will learn about the k-fold cross-validation method. So this is just a little reminder of the holdout cross-validation method, the one that we have been using so far. And what we do in holdout cross-validation is to hold out a percentage of observations. And these, uh, so we have two data sets. We call one training data set. The other one is called testing. And we use the testing data set to calculate our evaluation metric. And the rest of the, of the data is used for training the, the model. So this is holdout cross-validation. Now, the advantage of holdout is that it is very easy to implement and it is a very intuitive uh, method. Now, the problem is that it provides a single estimate for the evaluation metric of the model. Now, this is problematic since some models rely on randomness. So in principle, it is possible that the evaluation metric calculated on the test set will vary and sometimes it will vary a lot because of random chance. So the main problem with holdout cross-validation is, is that we get only one estimation of our evaluation metric. To overcome this, um, this limitation, we can use k-fold cross-validation, which is basically doing uh, holdout cross-validation many times. So in k-fold cross-validation, what we do is to partition the data set into k equal sized samples. So uh, this is a visual example of a five-fold cross-validation. So as you can see, we divide our data set in five parts. Then we use the first part for testing and the rest for training. And in this first step of, of the five-fold cross-validation, we get the first estimation of our evaluation metrics. After that, we use the second part for testing and the rest for training. And then we can get a second estimation of our evaluation metrics. And then we use the third part for testing and the rest for training and so on. Uh, and then in this way, we get not only one estimation of, uh, of the evaluation metrics, but we get five. Okay, so after uh, the K estimations of the evaluation metrics have been observed, an average of them will give us a better estimation of the performance of the model. So instead of having just one, uh, one uh, evaluation metric or one uh, estimation of this evaluation metric, we can get many with k-fold cross-validation and then we can take the average and we will get a better estimation for the performance of the model. Now, the good thing about this k-fold cross-validation method is that it can be used not only for model evaluation, but 
Also, we can use it for uh, hyperparameter tuning. Now, common values for K are 5 and 10. We usually use 10. And of course, there are other variants of k-fold cross-validation, like repeated cross-validation. And in repeated cross-validation, what we do is we perform uh, k-fold cross-validation many times. So let's say that you want 30 estimations of your evaluation metric. In that case, you can do uh, six times five-fold cross-validation. So then you will get uh, 30 estimations of your um, of your evaluation metric. And another variant of uh, k-fold cross-validation would be uh, leave one out cross-validation. And in that case, what we do is we take the whole data set for training except for one point. We use that one point for evaluation. And then we repeat this process with every data point in our data set. Now, uh, if you have millions of points, of course, this will be really, really expensive computationally. And usually, you know, k-fold cross-validation or repeated k-fold cross-validation uh, will give you uh, really good, good results. Okay, so now that we know uh, the, 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 the idea behind k-fold cross-validation, let's see how to implement these in scikit-learn. So let's go to our Jupyter Notebook. Okay, retake. We can start from here. Okay, here we have in this notebook uh, an example of performing k-fold cross-validation in scikit-learn. Okay, as usual, we import the libraries we will use. And in this cell, we uh, prepare the uh, diamonds dataset, which is the one that we will use here in this example. And here in this cell, we are preparing the objects for modeling. Now, this is the same cell that we um, used before in, in previous videos. Now, the only difference here is that we are not using the train test split function. So we are using, uh, here we are producing the X matrix that contains all the, all the features. And here we have our target feature. Um, so we have our X mat matrix and our y vector okay now we will instantiate a random forest regressor that we found uh, was the best model uh, back in section one for this data set now to perform k-fold cross-validation what we do is we import the cross-validate function from uh, the model selection module in scikit-learn and the way this works is, is, is um, the following. First, we provide an estimator. So we provide an instance of, our, of a model that we want to uh, evaluate. In this case, will be the random forest regressor. We pass uh, the x and the x object and the y object. And then we provide uh, a set of metrics that we would like to evaluate for, for this model and this data set. Okay, so in this case, we will, uh, we will evaluate using the mean squared error and the error two metrics. There are other metrics that you can use as well. And here in this, in this parameter CV, you pass the K. So in this case, we will do tenfold cross validation. Okay. So uh, after running that, what you will get here, um, the, the output of this cross-validate function will be a dictionary with the corresponding metrics. And uh, in order to, uh, to, to get a better understanding of these scores uh, result, so we transform this into a data frame. And as you can see, this is what we got after running, after running this, this cell. We get the test mean square error and the test R2, which were the two metrics that we uh, wanted to evaluate. And here we get the training uh, mean square error and the training R2. So we are interested in the testing metrics. Okay. And as I said, back in the presentation, uh, you can get a better uh, assessment of the performance of the model by taking an average of all of these, all, all of these individual um, measurements okay so after taking an average uh, you can see here that the mean of the test mse is this value that we have here and you can of course take an, an, an average of the of the other metric which was the the r squared and this is the evaluation metric that we get so um, this is how we implement 
k-fold cross validation in scikit-learn we use the cross validate function uh, we pass here how many uh, the, the, the k parameter for our cross validation and as I said before uh, the most common values are 5 and 10 we will we use 10 here and uh, after after that you can take an average of the testing metrics to get a better assessment of model performance now what I have here is how to do it with the credit card default data set you can take a look at that but uh, it's essentially the same procedure okay so what I have here is how to do k cross validation using the other data set the credit card default data set but it is essentially the same procedure uh, the main function to use here is the cross validate remember that you have to pass an estimator object that you have uh, instantiated uh, here okay so uh, this is how to do uh, k fold cross validation in scikit-learn uh, it is relatively simple because scikit-learn is such a great tool Okay, so in this video, we learned about k-fold cross-validation for better model evaluation.